In this week's Attack Wing Tuesday, we're going to be going back in time, a long time, to this. This is a Deep Cuts Intrepid class. Something I almost forgot I even had to do. So what we're going to do is a part two here and start on the next stage of this Voyager slash Intrepid. And so what we're going to do is try and give it some depth and shadow. And we do that with a wash. Now normally we would be using an acrylic wash like a GW's Null Oil. But I want to, and then you layer it back up. It's a little bit too much detail, I think, to try and do an uh, acrylic wash. So instead what we're going to do is a watercolor wash. Yep. This is just a straight up um, watercolor from Michaels. Nothing too fancy about it. It's a little higher end one than normal. This is like a $5 tube or so. And all I'm going to do is going to take some of the pigment and quite a bit of water. I'm going to make it really thin. Oh, I need a better work surface here. There we go. Let's splash my... wash is that we want it to run into all the recesses. Now what I did to prepare this, ooh, it just does not want to stick, which is fine, is I actually just sprayed the thing with Tester's Dull Coat, which is a lacquer flat varnish. And we definitely wanted lacquer, not acrylic varnishes. Um, because the lacquer is, because acrylic varnishes aren't necessarily waterproof and we definitely need something waterproof for this step. So, and I just prefer lacquer varnishes because of that. You might need a little bit more pigment in here, not too much water. The main thing we want to do is have all the color go into all the recesses and gaps between panels and whatnot. I'm going to try and thin that, thicken that up a little bit. That's better. And the reason why we're using a watercolor wash instead of an acrylic is we want to be able to remove it instead of having to layer up on top of it. And it doesn't really matter how bad it looks here because we're not trying to get a uniform coat here. We're just trying to get it. on the model, into the recesses here. And the thing about this watercolor wash, of course, it dries pretty quick. Not a whole lot different than a uh, acrylic wash, probably even faster, and unlike an oil wash, which would take forever. Let's keep going over the surfaces until it sticks. There we go. There we go, that seems to work out pretty well. All the details are filled in this watercolor wash. The other thing you want to look out for is air bubbles. You don't want any air bubbles in it.
want any gray showing. Of course, you can always speed up the drying process for the hair dryer because it is just watercolors. There we go. So there we got the fully washed Intrepid. Now the next step will be trying to clean off all the excess, excess instead of having to layer up on top of it. So we'll get this set up for a little bit here and we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so now the watercolor is mostly dry. So going to the next step, all I'm just going to do is use some water, Q-tip, and uh, a brush to just basically pull the watercolor off the top surfaces, just leaving it in, in the crevices. Kind of like I've done already here, just as kind of a proof of concept. I said it just comes off quite easily. You can almost even just rub it off with your hands. You really don't mind. All we can do is grab some fresh water here, put it in a Q-tip, and we don't want it soaking wet, we want it just damp, so, okay. Because what we're going to do is avoid having any water run down into the recesses between the panels. And it just comes right off. We'll take a few Q-tips to get this done. all it takes. And it almost completely restores because it doesn't even really stain the paint you know, because of the uh, lack of varnish that's on there. Mostly because it just doesn't work that way. So we just wanted the paint the water with the black and all the details and panel lines. Just to give them all some depth. Now this can be a pretty tedious process and you might pull some out of the recesses and you have to start over a little bit, but that's fine. It's still way less time intensive than uh, layering at the panels and it looks better than dry brushing. If you want a little more detail than the um, Q-tip, you can always grab a brush again, make it just damp, and just kind of use it to soften up the stuff. You don't want to wipe it off your hand. And then you don't want very much water on them, you just want it damp so you don't hit pull the stuff out of the uh, panel lines. So yeah, that's the next step. I'm just going to go over the whole thing. It'll take a little while. And some, uh, being careful with it is always a good idea. Back when that's all done. Okay, so now the cleaning process is done. It takes about half a dozen Q-tips and some brushwork, and it, this is how it turned out. I'm very happy with the results. All the recesses are picked out. All the panel lines are filled in. The only place that's missing here is right there on the side where I had to uh, file down the mold lines. Lost some of the panel lines. And I had to use a brush in a few places, like mainly between where the saucer section hits the hull. Um, I had to get in there with a brush to get out some excess. Q-tip wouldn't reach. But yeah, looks pretty darn good. Nice, lots of depth to it. And I think it looks better than a dry brushing over an acrylic wood. So, which we can probably do in the uh, next one if you want. So, all that's left here is to go start, grab some uh, colors and pick out the details. And we'll take care of that in part three. Thanks for watching.